Hello, it's David Schlothauer with a tropical update on Tropical Storm Brett for Tuesday afternoon, June 21st. As always, my thoughts in this video are mine alone, and making any decisions regarding Tropical Storm Brett, please consult the National Hurricane Center and your local officials for the best information for where you are. Also, if you're new and you like these detailed tropical updates, hit the subscribe button the notification bell, and leave a comment so you can get all of my updates. So we're going to get started and look at the central portion of the main development region where we are going to be talking a lot about Tropical Storm Brett as it has further intensified this afternoon, according to the National Hurricane Center, as it inches closer to St. Lucia, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, as well as some of the other um, portion of the Lesser Antilles. So when we take a look at a closer zoomed in view of the satellite imagery here on Brett, we can see a little bit has changed maybe in a good way, but for some portions of the storm, it has actually exploded this afternoon. So we can see to start off looking at the inner core structure, we have um, some explosive thunderstorm development on the visible satellite imagery. We can see when we pause the video right about here or the animation, you can see some overshooting tops, which do indicate we are seeing some pretty intense updrafts and explosiveness to thunderstorm convection associated with the inner core structure. We're also seeing stronger inflow that we have take note of, but also at the same time, when we look at the overall perspective system, we can see there is an outflow boundary. You can see the arcing band right there. Well, what does that mean? Well, that means we have um, a lot of sinking air. We have dry air. Uh, when we have rain cooled air, it actually cools the air. So the air sinks and moves outward in all quadrants. And that kind of gives us a telltale sign. We have a lot of dry air that is in the way of or in the face of Tropical Storm Brett, and it will soon get encroached into the system. We might even be seeing that already to develop. We're also seeing some shear. Now, some weather YouTubers out there are saying that the shear is not very strong, and this is when it gets tricky. Don't pay attention to the outflow cirrus canopy, all right? A lot of folks are focusing on that. A lot of forecasters are thinking that this is a pretty healthy natured or nurtured type system. But what we, uh, what a lot of forecasters are missing, not the NHC, NHC is doing a very excellent job at this, is see these low level cloud filaments right in here, right underneath that outflow. They're actually coming in out of the northwesterly direction. So the fact that we have some mid-level flow at about 25,000 feet that is coming in out of this direction on top of the system that is moving generally westward at about 10 to 15 miles an hour, that's actually going to help induce a little bit of westerly shear right around 20 to maybe 25 knots, could even be locally stronger given that we might already be seeing the beginnings of an assemblance of a really lopsided structure where a lot of the deep convection is well weighted on the eastern side of the system. We knew this was coming with a deep inner core with explosive thunderstorm convection that is pulsating, which means that the center if we pause this one last time, right in here, we might be able to see that the center might be right on the western fringe of this mass, the CDO, convective, or, uh, yeah, uh, convective dense overcast or central dense overcast in other words. So this means the shear and dry air is already beginning to take part in the de deformation process of Brett. Now looking at the water vapor imagery, uh, let's actually look at the floater. I don't know if I was able to show you all that. Yeah, I was. Good thing it was on there. I forget to switch scenes sometimes, so I do apologize by that. But we're not going to, or will you? We are not going to apologize for the good work that this dry air is doing. And we can see these darker gray colors, okay, underneath the cirrus, uh, milky white cirrus, indicates we have the dry air. It's there. It's a little darker uh, than the surrounding air. This is pretty moist all back in here. But fortunately, the system is in an environment where it's going to be moving into this drier pocket of air. And that drier air is, of course, helping to induce this outflow, these um, arcing bands, all right, these shelf clouds. 
right here. We got another one right here. We have a little bit of one right there, which indicates we had thunderstorms here and they have now since collapsed. Because what? We got the dry air and shear that is inhibiting this system. So how strong is the tropical storm right now well the plane found winds that are right around 60 and 65 miles an hour there is some satellite data that proves my point that winds have increased to 65 miles an hour so this is nearing a high-end tropical storm and additional strengthening cannot be ruled out tonight maybe up to 70 miles an hour at the very most with this system and that is if it could hold together just a hair longer before the deformation process begins by early tomorrow morning. But for the time being, this remains a pretty strong tropical storm with winds that are anywhere between 50, about 60 and 65 miles an hour. Actually 65 to near perhaps getting awfully close to 70 miles an hour. So despite being under the influence of mid-level westerly shear, again, that's what I've talked about, and a lot of forecasters on YouTube are missing this portion of the forecast. There is shear. Just because we have outflow does not mean that there is no shear there. It means the, the serious outflow is occurring at a different level of the atmosphere, and the atmosphere is in three-dimensional. So keep that in mind, okay, that we do have shear, it's just not at the level which you typically expect. And shear could impact the system at any level of the atmosphere that's at the surface, the mid-levels, or the upper levels. That's 200 millibars. So yeah, this is what we're seeing right now is the shear is beginning to kind of take hold of tropical storm Brett. An Air Force Hurricane Hunter aircraft measured a fairly solid area of 50 to 55 knot winds to the northeast of the center, and the central pressure has fallen to 1,000 millibars. In addition, Dovrik estimates from Tafab and Sab are a consensus of 55 knots, so Brett's initial intensity is therefore raised to 55 knots. The deep convection continues to favor the eastern side of the circulation, although a burst of convection recently formed over the center like we just talked about. Now it'll be interesting if we can get more inclusive of the deep convection that is able to kind of wrap on the up shear side, we might again have plus or minus five miles an hour uh, for the current intensity because it's gonna remain this intense for the next 24 hours. And we can see fluctuations in intensity um, kind of within this time frame. Although there is a small possibility of slight additional strengthening, continued moderate mid-level shear is likely to keep um, Brett's intensity hovering right around 55 knots over the next 24 hours at it as it approaches the Lesser Antilles. Most of the intensity guidance supports this scenario. So again, what we're talking about here is that the system still can intensify just a little bit more before tomorrow early morning. And then once we get into early morning hours, that's when the shear and dry air will really kind of knock um, some sense into the system quite significantly. And we will start to see the system begin to spin down as it moves into the Caribbean and encounters that shear and dry air. So Brett is forecast to approach the Lesser Antilles through Thursday and then move across those islands late. Let me make sure I got my graphics. There we go. Um, late Thursday and Thursday night as a strong tropical storm, bringing a risk of flooding from heavy rainfall, strong winds, and dangerous waves along the coast. Given the uncertainty in the track and intensity forecast, it is still a bit too early to specify the exact location and magnitude of where Brett's associated hazards could occur. A tropical storm warning is therefore in effect for St. Lucia and Martinique, and a tropical storm watch has been in effect for Barbados and Dominica. Additional warnings and watches are possible for some of the islands in the Lesser Antilles tonight. So make sure you have your plan in place because, yes... Just because we are seeing a tropical storm and it's not a hurricane does not mean you will not see as big of impacts. Tropical storms have had a history in other areas to producing very impressive impacts such as substantial life-threatening flooding, storm surge, damaging winds, tornadoes, water spouts, that sort of thing. Alright, so let's kind of think a little bit about that.
just because it's a tropical storm does not mean you should not be as concerned about the system at all. Okay, I want to make myself clear on that. So tropical storm force winds, there is now a 50 to 60% chance of that occurring for Thursday night over Dominica, Martinique, St. Kitts and Nevis as well. Uh, St. Kitts, uh, St. Kitts and Nevis and the Grenadines. St. Vincent and the Grenadines. That's what I was looking for. Sorry, everybody. Yes, there's so many islands out there that it is literally, it's hard to memorize them. It really is, if you follow me on that. All right, but you get the idea. If you're on Barbados, yeah, you have some tropical storm force winds headed your way. So just be aware of that, along with heavy rain, squally weather conditions. So here's a look at the latest intensity as far as um, from the National Hurricane Center. It has winds up to 65 miles an hour, and there are tropical storm watches and warnings out for some of the lesser Antilles. So if you're under a warning, please take my advice seriously because, again, flooding, strong winds, and storm surge are all anticipated. The system will die out within the next three or so days once it enters the Caribbean. Substantial weakening is therefore expected because of the dry air and sheer. So now that we talked about that, let's look at our numerical forecasts. Um, and we're going to do this a little differently because I want to also kind of focus a little bit on the Eastern Pacific because we have a couple of systems there that could spin up near the country of Mexico and could work their way up. Also, at the same time, we have a really busy, awkward Atlantic. And I mean, um, there has been a lot of... Um, tweets about this, how active it's actually been, and no surprise, we are looking at possibly um, two named storms in the month of June, actually three, because Arlene, at the very beginning, that was dubbed a name on June 1st, and we have Brett here, and we might have Cindy in its heels for the end of June, so... Yeah, I mean, three named storms in the month of June, that is very uncommon for the deep tropics this time of the year. So yeah, it just means of what's to come. So drier air is in brown here. Lots of green is indicated with a lot of moisture. So as we zoom in uh, briefly on this, uh, we can see that the system as it approaches these islands, the Lesser Antilles, it's going to be very weighted here. Lots of moisture on the eastern side, hardly anything over the center. So you will get the winds and possibly some storm surge first and then the rain and flooding afterwards. And yeah, there's a lot of moisture well after the passage of that system and it opens up into an open wave trough. For day three and that's why the nhc explicitly shows that the system will open up into an open wave trough thereafter and then of course we're looking at invest 93l we're going to briefly talk about this one uh in just a second we can see the moisture pocket there and that still has a intimate threat to the northern lesser antilles by the weekend that's right. Yeah, by the weekend, we can see actually the latter part of the weekend in early next week. So when you take a look at the shear on this system, the first system, yeah, there's a lot of westerly shear on this. And that's what I was talking about, folks. Just because it doesn't look all that big on satellite, there is shear present. 25 to 30 mile, uh, 30 knots at least is what we're seeing. And then the next system right in here really gets bombated by a lot of shear from the westerly direction. And then that continues to be the case through day five. So now let's kind of zoom out here and take a look once again at our uh, main development region wide satellite imagery. Now that we talked about Tropical Storm Brett, that is a check mark that we covered it. Now it's time to focus on our area over here. Invest 90. 3L. That is, it is not named. It is not a tropical depression. It is just under investigation by the NHC, which is why they dubbed it 93L. Zoomed in view on 93L, we can see that before the sun goes down, we have a new burst here popping up right there, which might indicate that the vortex is probably getting better aligned. And we can even see some low-level rotation sliding right underneath that deep convection. So it would be interesting to see with how this all evolves over, say, the next 24 hours. If that deep pocket of deep convection can persist long enough, this could be a tropical depression as early as tomorrow morning or tomorrow afternoon or maybe even as early as tonight, uh, for all we know. 
Uh, lots of moisture inflow on the northern side. We even have moisture being pulled in out of the southwesterly direction on the bottom side of the system. We have west, uh, southerly wind here. We have um, west or northerly wind on the western flank of the system, which means that this system is becoming a bit better organized. It has that classic look that would be almost deemed a tropical depression because of the recent deep convection that we have seen at the moment. So here's a look at um, the seven day forecast as far as from the NHC. This is still an 80% chance of tropical formation. Now this hatched area is where it might form within seven days. It does not mean that it forms here and it's going to be moving generally this way. This means that the NHC is watching this area for possible tropical development in seven days. That's a week out in time and it has a high chance. From uh, that to tropical tidbits, again, on the numerical data, let's kind of take a look at this, kind of zoom it out and so you all can see a little bit better with what we're talking about here. Um, so 93L is still has an intimate threat. Now it looks a bit more indirect, safe to say, but still getting uncomfortably close to some of the islands, especially some of the um, models here like the HMNI and the HWFI and the CTCI bring it a little too close to the Virgin Islands throughout the next three to five days, while the majority of the model consensus is still plenty offshore, probably almost a safe distance away from the islands, you'll probably get indirect impacts such as maybe some um, high surf, maybe some breezy winds, maybe some outflow type uh, tropical-like activity from uh, outer bands from these from that storm system itself, you're probably not going to get direct impacts, but that could change significantly. So make sure you stay up to date on my channel for that. But that's a look at the track guidance. Now the intensity forecast is calling this to become a tropical storm, perhaps in the next two to three days. It is too soon to tell if that's going to actually happen. We have seen uh, models do this before where they kind of overestimate things and then they recorrect for the lower end of the forecast and therefore my intensity forecast is at the very low end of the forecast and is now indicating that the system will become a tropical storm with winds between 40 and 45 miles an hour in about three to four days might take a little longer than that now, some of the other high-end models indicate a high-end tropical storm or a low-end hurricane. It wouldn't matter at this point because if this gets named, this would be the third named storm of the Atlantic hurricane season in the month of June, which is ironically rare to see for this time of the year. Well, that is it for this video. If you did enjoy the content and you like the detailed discussions that I do present here on Tropical Storm Brett, as well as Invest 93L, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. It really means a lot. Share this video with your family and friends on social media, such as Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, as well as TikTok. Share it all over. And also be sure to leave an awesome comment in the section below this video. That is it for now. Thank you for watching.